All right, back at it. So, once you've checked your end play and you've air checked everything and everything checks out, you're gonna remove your pump and you're gonna go ahead and continue on. We'll install the band, the servo into the servo cover and install that into the transmission case itself. Start off with our servo cover. You have your gasket, usually has a color stripe on it. So, we're going to come on in, bring that down, again being careful not to roll the seal inside the groove because you definitely don't want to twist on it. Hands are still a little slippery from the transmission fluid and uh, assembly goo. Once you're done, should look something like that. Now, we'll go ahead and put a little bit of blue on the seal itself. That way we're not dry installing anything. Go ahead, lube up the inner bore, just like so, and then we will lube up the outer bore. We'll take some of that extra, wipe it off on the side. And then grab it, just like that. We'll set this down. We'll grab our new servo. We'll go ahead and throw some around that. And throw some around that. And there we are. Now, we take our servo cover and our servo, place it in, and press in. That easy. So, <clears throat> set that aside. We're going to need our gasket that goes on there. So, we come over to our kit, grab our gasket. It is going to go on without ripping it. Definitely don't want that. Just like so. Okay. Your spring, you definitely do not want to leave this out. Um, you will have band and clutch timing issues if you leave this spring out. Please do not leave it out. Grab some green, that way she sticks and doesn't come off. Alright, now we can turn and install the whole hot mess. Just like so. Okay. I should have grabbed the bolts, but they're within reach. They're right here. Let's see. Oh, needs to turn just a touch. There we go. So that one's going to go in. Right there. All right, now we don't have to hold it. With that updated spring, it's a lot tougher, and it just might shoot this right back out at you. So you want to be careful. Actually, that goes.
goes there. And then there is an ID tag that goes with this. Here it is. This one's being a little bit of a pain. Someone literally riding a bike down the street. Is it going? Didn't know if you heard that or not. All right. Now that's nice and installed. Our ID tags on. We'll come over here, and we've got the tip of the shaft sticking out right there. That's what you need. Now we're going to go ahead and install our band. So our band's been over here soaking in all different kinds of directions. Go ahead and give her one more good roundabout. There we go. Now this is the extra wide rat uh extra wide high energy red band. I uh, believe it this is also the band that comes standard like in your Raybestos Red Stage 1 set. So Sneak that past. Sneak that past there. And just like so. I don't know if you can see that, but that band takes up nearly the entire width of that drum. So it is a much better option than the stock band or even the wide band. band is freaking awesome. I love it. Let's go ahead and get our anchor bolt. And that is going to go ahead and sit right in the cup. And adjust the band. The height of it where it rides. There we go. Just like so. All right. Now, you should be able to check that. Yep. It checks out. So we're good there. Put the rubber tip back on. All right, let's see. Next, we can go ahead and grab our new gasket for our pump. Set that into place. Come on. She's fighting me. Don't fight me. There we go. Beautiful. I always take a little bit of uh, assembly lube and 
coat the gasket itself. I've already coated the surface where the gasket rides on the case. Now if we just do a little bit on the top of the gasket, that'll cover where the pump's going to touch it. That way, the next time this comes off, it's not going to stick. Or if you have to take this off for some reason, um, change out a part, anything. It'll make it to where this gasket comes off in one piece and you don't have to go get a new one. So... Make sure we're all lined up, and we are. All right, <clears throat> now we need our pump. Um, that actually is There, good there, good there, good there, and good there. Okay. Always make sure you Put some assembly lube wherever your ceiling rings are going to ride. Also make sure you have assembly lube in where your bushings are. Just so you're not dry rubbing on your bushings and causing any kind of premature wear. Now, let's go ahead and install our pump. grab our seven pump bolts. They're the uh, short shank, longer bolts, half inch head. Sorry about the uh, camera angle there. This won't take long. Let's speed handle these down right quick. And then we'll torque them. And then we'll move on.
fight me a little bit, but that's normal. There's always at least a little bit of fight. Okay, now we'll take some uh, green assembly lube, lube up your front stator bushing. Again, sorry you can't see it. Slide in our input shaft, and we're good to go. All right, so our next step is I'm going to go ahead and move this away on the back of the bench. And I'll move all of the valve body assembly and governor assembly onto our table here so that we can go through all of that, put that together, and you guys can follow along with that. So give me a sec and I'll get that set up. <clears throat> all right, we're back. I would definitely recommend having someone help you remove the transmission from upright to laying down. I had to do it by myself and I forget how heavy that thing freaking is. It's a dang monster once it's got the guts in it. Alright, so this is our layout for our valve body, all your valves. So, starting with the, let's see here. That is your passing lever detent and spring. That's your manual gear um, selector. That's the hold down pin. This goes in with your detent. Um, that's your throttle pressure relief and converter clutch relief, I believe. And you'll have a check ball that goes in the um, valve body itself. This one doesn't take the second check ball for reverse. So this one only takes one check ball, plus a check ball on a spring, and a cup on a spring. Now, up above, going from left to right, you have your cutback valve. And we added in a spring here. And this... Adding the spring will give you firmer shifts, and what it'll do is carry out the gears longer during wide open throttle. This is your coasting valve. This is your 1-2 shift shuttle valve and shift valve, and then we updated the spring here. Um, this is your 2-3 shift valve, updated the spring here, and then this is your TMB. And then, let's see, this is your 2-3 back out. Some valve bodies will actually have another valve assembly behind it. Um, this one doesn't. This is your 1-2 uh, shift accumulator. Now if you want, you can actually take this spring out and block this accumulator off um, with a long rod or, a, I mean, really anything. And that'll really, really firm up your shift from first to second. Um, we didn't do that here. We put a little bit of a stiffer spring in and we did some modifications to the valve body and separator plate that's already going to do that for us. So if they want a firmer shift than that, then we can always block that off. But it's already going to be a nice firm shift. And then we changed out the servo valve for a different one. Let's see. This is the original and uh, let's see if we can get to focus. You can see it has a hole drilled through it. And it's hollow from those holes up to the top so fluid passes through. The new one is completely solid. No fluid pass through. And then an updated spring for that. And then what we've got moving on along is your um, the pressure regulator set up right here. Um, it's getting a new um, front valve assembly. I think this one is Sonix or it might be SK. SK shift kits for these C6s are really all around awesome. Um, they work really well. And then you've got your throttle boost and your low schedule. So here's your throttle boost. A um, little bit of an updated spring here. And your low schedule with a new spring there. And that's pretty much what we've got going on. Um, anyone that's done 4L60s knows about the check ball beating into the plate. Um, this one will also 
have this check ball beating in a little bit. So, and then we also opened up this feed hole right here to um, 110, I don't know, 0.110 is what this feed hole right here gets opened up to. That's really the only modification you need to make on your separator plate. Um, make sure this is flat where the check ball rides and then open that supply feed up and with these modifications plus that it really opens up this unit a lot. <clears throat> there are no check balls down in the um, valley so it's all up in the valve body itself. And we'll go ahead and start with this is your governor so um, everything's flat sanded so this is flat sanded both valve body halves are flat sanded you want to clean all of this out very very well and then you also want to make sure none of the valves are worn and then we can go ahead and start assembly so the big guy goes in there just like so then you'll have your smaller spring that goes in right on top. You have your cup that goes in. Let's see. I'm going to have to get a little bit of stuff on this one to get her to stay upright. That goes on, and then you have a C-clip that goes in right there. And I forgot to grab the pliers for it, so we'll see if I can do it by hand. I highly doubt it, but hey, you never can tell. She's not going to go by hand. Let's see if these guys will do it. Hey, what do you know? All right. So you're going to want to make sure that that C-clip is indeed all the way seated and clipped in, just like so, all the way around. You want to be able to push down on that. Then we move on to the other side, this side. This one gets this valve. goes in right there then you're gonna have the bigger of the two springs goes on just like that and then this clip will actually go in on top of the spring press down and push in before we do that we are gonna go ahead and grab a 350 check ball so a check ball from a turbo 350 and grab that real quick So, just a regular check ball, and what you're going to want to do is you put your spring in, take the check ball, and drop it in, then go ahead and install your retainer plate. Just like so. 
now. Hear that moving around in there? This valve loves to get stuck. Just that little bit right there will is enough 90% of the time to make sure that valve doesn't stick or it will free it up if it does stick. Um, I've done this multiple times and it's never failed. It's an awesome little trick. Um, actually, Ford started actually putting in a little metal spacer in there to do the same exact thing later on. So, it really works really well. Um, I've always had good luck with it. So, we'll go ahead and lube everything up. You definitely don't want anything in there dry rubbing and causing a problem. We can go ahead and set that aside. Now let's get on to the valve body. Let's take our separator plate, move her over. Okay. So it's gonna be a layout exactly left to right. How you see it left to right coming down. So actually let's do uh let's do our boost valve first. Go ahead and get a little lube in the hole. You're going to take your valve. There we go. Give it a spray down. Take the spring and get it in there, just like so. This, you're going to want to get just a little bit on the inside, a little lube on the outside. That way you're not cutting those seals. And then, she should go in nice and easy, just like so. Should have some uh, action right there on your black valve. And then, some take a clip inside. Let's see if we're in the frame yet. Some take a clip inside to hold this. Some take the plate. This is the older style that takes the plate. Make sure that that valley faces the valve. That's what makes it work. Okay. The biggest problem, or biggest mistake I should say, that people make when putting this valve body together is they'll put some of the valves in either backwards or put some springs in the wrong location. Um, the biggest one is as they're going along, they tighten all these down as they're going along. That is the wrong thing to do. You leave all of your plate bolts loose. You have them a little bit snug but still loose to where the plate itself can move around. And that's going to come in later. Because once we're done building this, we will mate the two halves together, line them up, bolt them down. Once those are squeezed together, then you take your plates in sequence and start tightening those down. And it makes it to where everything seals up nicely and you don't have any problems whatsoever. Now, Go ahead and get our detent, our manual shift lever here, lube it up and put it in. Okay, now that pin keeps the manual selector from sliding around and I suppose we can use that. So, you're going to move that roll pin over, and now your manual valve is in position and will not roll. Should smooth, um, nice and smooth, back and forth, no problems. So, 
the next one to go in will be our kick down. Still have some transmission fluid on our hands, so we'll rub that on the valve. Stick that in. Stick the spring in. And where did our little small screwdriver go? There we go. And this one takes this guy. Let's see. You're going to be difficult, are you? There we go. No. Oh, you son of a gun. Okay. Get you drop down in. And of course, because we're on video right now, it's giving me some problems. Why not, right? Woo! But it might be. Let's see. Yeah, it is. Okay. That should do it. You little bastard. This one does take a bit of patience. There we go. Thought I'd never get that in there. Beautiful. Okay. That up a touch. Much better. Okay. Now let's go ahead and move on to this side. We're going to do our throttle boost valve. That's going to go right inside there. Give her a quick squirt, and then our little schedule valve will go right there. Give her a quick squirt, and then that updated spring that goes in the low schedule valve essentially just blocks the valve off. Um, you can really use anything as long as it's not going to... You need to have the spacing perfect so the valve doesn't slam up against it and break, but... Essentially, all you're doing is uh, blocking that off. So, all right. Now let's put that up. Let's get that down.
depending on the year of the valve body you have, these smaller screws you might have a few different lengths. Um, in this case, they're all the all the small screws are the same length. We don't have any that are larger or smaller, so really don't have to worry about that too much. All right, nice and loose. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and we need the TMV valve back with the two, three ship valve. There we go. All right. So we'll go ahead and loop up our passageways for the remaining valves. And then we'll start with our cutback valve. Go ahead. Ah. Drop our spring in. All right. Cut back goes in nice and easy. Grab our coasting valve. That's going to go in. All right. That moves nicely. Let's take our one, two, shift valve. Careful, because there is a spring in there, so you want to make sure that spring stays seated in the valve. Okay, that's looking good. Now... Let's see if we can get this in all as one piece. I doubt it, but this is our 2-3 with the TMV valve at the end and a spring in the middle. There we go. Spring is still in. Beautiful. Do our two three back out. Takes the cut plug, and then the spring, and then the cut back valve itself. And there we are. Our accumulator. Get that to drop in, then the spring, and then our servo valve with the spring. Okay. All those are nice and loose. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go ahead. All the valley grooves are going to go in towards the valve body. I don't have the dang screws handy. Why would I have that? That would make too much sense, right? Shit. Okay. If you had longer screws um, for this plate, You'd want to make sure the shorter ones are up top, the longer ones are on the bottom. Just take that for what it is. Like I said, this one has all the same length screws for this plate. It is a bit of a pain to try and hold down to set those first few screws. Okay, 
it and that was it. There was a little piece in there, but there wasn't. Okay. These are going to be... They should be all 3 8 trying to find my 3 8 or 5 16 actually. Hmm. Well... Looks like my 3 8 isn't here. Hold on one sec. Okay. I think I said 3 8, I meant 5 16. doing is just hand tightening these in just until it touches that way the plate itself can still move That takes care of that. Just get a rag to wipe the hands down with. Okay. Well, it's cold out here tonight. My nose is running, so let me take care of that real quick, and we'll be right back. All right, continuing on. Let's see. Now. stuff out of the way here. Your valve body. The two halves don't necessarily need to take a gasket. Some people use the gasket, some don't. We're going to go ahead and use the gasket just because. This will help. Hold that baby in place. Take your separator plate. The transmission fluid will help it move around just a touch. There you go. Now, let's flip this guy over. And you've got a few things that you need to put in still. So, you've got only one check ball in this valve body right here. Um, the secondary check ball for a reverse would be right around this area down here. Um, I believe right below this screw. I think it's like right in there. But obviously there's no spot for it. So this one gets a check ball right there. Then you're going to have the throttle relief spring goes here. This check ball will go on it. The throttle relief spring and the converter relief spring are two different sizes. So your 
to tell. The throttle relief spring is shorter. That one goes here. This one goes here. It can be a check ball on the uh, converter relief or it can be the plug. It really doesn't matter. They've done it so many different ways. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dab some green on this spring on both ends. So that way it stays down in the valve body and that stays there. Same with this guy. There we go. And then take a little bit of green. And that should hold our check ball in. <clears throat> now we go ahead and mate the two halves together. That's the little bit of a pain, um, but it is what it is. So we need, let's see, this one is going to go there, this one will go here, this and this, and this is going to hold the separator plate and the gasket all together in a nice neat little package for us. Where in the heck did the other bolt go? Let's see here. I don't think it's this, although I guess it could be. Let's see. Well, for sake of holding it together, we can at least use that for now. There we go. Now, we can go ahead and mate the two converter halves. Hold on one sec. I'm trying to remember how to line this guy up. Should be just like so. Let's try it. Should be it right there. All right. You've got your shorter bolts, two longer bolts. One of the longer ones goes here. That should hold everything together.
flip it on over. And then we should have, let's see here, it should be, should have this one here. Line up, line it up. So let's loosen these ones just a touch. This is kind of the pain in the butt part, but this needs to be perfect. Another reason why you leave a lot of these screws only hand or bolts hand tight. You don't want any of this to mess up on you. We'll go ahead and temporarily put this bolt in. This one, your ID tag should be up here in the corner. All right, now that those are in, we can go ahead and tighten this down. I mean, this is like, ouch, eight foot pounds. Um, anything more than a good snug on a nut driver and you're probably going too hard. You can definitely lock down the valves inside. All right, now is the time where you can do all of these. This needs to be pushed down and then tightened up. There we go. to your alignment plate. Just snug that one down. Come over here to this one. This is your keeper. Keeps the plate from blowing out. This one. Go. All right, on 
to this one, pushing down and tightening, and then same with our boost valve. said eight inch pounds or eight foot pounds so anything more than a tight snug and you are taking this thing way too tight now we can go ahead and get started with our um, filter so let me grab that and a gasket and we'll be right back all right we're back hi hey, hey. who's gonna go right there and then we've got a filter gasket just gonna go right there we've got our filter Are we recording? Yeah, all right, cool. All right. <clears throat> and I will go ahead and tell you that I messed up. Um, I'm gonna have to re-loosen the side plates a little bit because I'm stupid and it's late because all these need to be tight before you do the side plates as well so we'll go ahead and loosen the side plates up before we tighten this down oh before I get this bolt in here's another common one this bolt here is longer than these ones here okay now, the longest bolt out of the whole dang bunch goes right here in that corner. Okay? Your longest bolt out of the perimeters goes here in this corner. So make sure you don't mess that up. Sorry if I'm not talking a lot anymore. Like I said, it's late. I'm doing this at home. I'm tired. Okay. So let's go ahead and crack that loose. Crack that loose. We'll flip this over. loose there we go just remember to tighten all your valve body bolts before tightening your side plate bolts.
timber anything more than a tight snug and you are messing things up. Check these guys. There we go. Valve body complete. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this hooked up into the transmission. <clears throat> put the governor on and get the rest of the stuff put on. We'll go ahead and call this video since it's already an hour dang long. And then um, we'll pick it back up and keep on trucking. Alright guys, thanks.